From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Room 1302. This is the desk clerk. I have a call here. Never mind the call. You call the police. You call the police. Call the police and tell them to hurry. There's an attempted suicide up here. Who is this? Shut up and do as I tell you. Now, just a minute. It won't do you any good. It won't do you any good at all. Wait a minute. Police. You, who cares? I'm going to jump. Anyhow. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Los Angeles, California. To the Eastern Trust Insurance Company Claims Division, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Broderick matter. An old man in Hartford died and left $1,500 insurance money to a little girl who had been nice to him one afternoon back in 1943. My job, get the money to her. Even if she might take it and jump off the 13th floor ledge of a building. Don't. Don't come any closer. I'll jump. Lorraine. Don't come any closer. It's cold out there. Don't you think you should come inside? I'm going to jump. Away now. Don't try to grab me. All right. All right, I'll do anything you say, Lorraine. Okay. What are you doing? Taking off my coat. Standing out there, it must be cold. Here. You take my coat. Don't come close. I'm not. I don't want your coat. All right, Lorraine. I never saw you before in my life. How do you know my name? I've seen you. No, you haven't. I remember people. Watch out. Just going to light a cigarette. I can light a cigarette, can I? Do you want one? No. Can I have one? Suit yourself. Are you a policeman? No. Where did you see me? In a picture. In your high school annual at St. Charles. St. Charles? What do you know about St. Charles? What's your name? Johnny Dollar. Are you from Hartford? Yes. Let me see your face in the light. Over there. Don't come near this window. Don't come near her. I'll jump right down there. That's right there. No, you aren't from Hartford. I never knew you. You're lying to me. No, I'm not. As room clerk of this hotel, I'm entitled to know... Oh. Go away! Get out of here! Get out of here or I'll jump! What? Get out. Go on, go on, go on, get out. Yes, yes. Did you call the police? Uh, no, uh, but I will. I heard you tell him about the police. I don't care. They can't stop me. Nobody can stop me. No. No, I suppose not, Lorraine. You can jump anytime you want to. I can't stop you. And I wanted somebody to call the police. I want them all down there. When the crowd's big enough, I'll jump. And I'm not afraid to do it. I'm not afraid. I know that. Lorraine, why don't you come away from the edge? I won't hurt you. Everybody hurts me. You would, too. Why do you want to jump, Lorraine? I have my reasons. Look. There's a couple of people down there who see me. They're looking up here. They'd like to see me jump. Look. They're stopping other people. They'd all like to see me jump. I don't think they'd like to see that at all, Lorraine. Oh, yes, they would. Those people down there would love to see it happen. You'd like it, too. No. No, I wouldn't. I want you to live, Lorraine. You're afraid, aren't you? Yes, I am. Why? Dying is something all of us face. If you die here tonight, it makes me a little afraid of dying. I don't like to be afraid of anything. Neither do I. You must be afraid of something. I'm not afraid of anything. I've never been afraid of anything. I'm going to jump down there, and that proves I'm not afraid. I don't believe you, Lorraine. I think you were afraid to love Dr. Pollard in Hartford. I think you were afraid to marry William Dameron in New York City. I think you've been afraid of everything and everybody that was good for you for a long, long time. Don't come closer. Would you like to talk to a priest, Lorraine? No. Look, sometimes a priest can help you when you're, you're all mixed... I'm so worried I'm going to jump off here any minute. You'd say anything. 
or try anything. I don't even know what you're doing here, why you came here. I told you, Lorraine, I've been looking for you. Tell him to go back. Tell him to go back, will you? Go back, go back. Go on back, you crazy fools. Get back. It's all right. They aren't coming. I don't want anybody here. A lot more people down there in the street now. Oh, they're getting the big lights up here. Golly. Lorraine, look at me. Look toward me. I want to help you, Lorraine. Nobody wants to help me. Nobody's ever wanted to help me. You're wrong. Then why did Mama and Daddy die? Why did they have to die? Why did Uncle Jim die? Why was I left alone? Why didn't I have anybody? You did have somebody. You had Dr. Pollard if you wanted him. You had William Dameron. Did you meet? William? Yes, sure. Last week. He's still very much in love with you, Lorraine. After I stole money from him and, and walked out on him? Oh, the money meant nothing to him. He still loves you, Lorraine. He told me so. I don't love him. I never loved him. He thought so. He was just nice. Why did you leave him that way? I'm no good. I never have been. You know... I've never been any good to anybody. You're lying to me about him. Would you like to talk to Dameron? I can get him on the phone. No, I don't want to talk to him or to anybody I know. But after I jump, you can tell him something for me. Sure. Tell him I meant to send the money back to him. I didn't... You can tell him I loved him. He'd feel good if you told him that, I think. All right. Go back! I don't care who you are! Go back or I'll jump right now! Wait! Close that hall door. Do you want to see me jump? You'll have to watch from the street down there with the others! Close it! Was he a policeman? I suppose so. I don't know. He looked foolish. Oh, Lord, he looked foolish. Yeah, well, uh, we all look foolish at one time or another. It passes. Do I look foolish? Yes. Yeah, you look foolish. You're not going through with this. You know that for the first time in my life, I know exactly what I want to do, how I want to do it. I'm going to jump. Somebody's on the roof out here. They have a net. A big net. From what I know about you, I thought you always knew pretty much what you wanted to do in life. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's very funny. I knew what I wanted in life. I never knew anything. And it's all botched up. Mom and Daddy died. I should have died, too. I should have been with Mom and Daddy when they were killed in the car. Well, it won't be long. I'll be with them. I won't be tired anymore pretty soon. Those men with a net up there. Lorraine, wait. Wait for what? You said you talked to people who've known me, who know what I was and what I am. Well, I didn't turn out the way they wanted me to, did I? I didn't even turn out the way I wanted to be. Look at me. Why should I wait? One man had more faith in you than anybody else. They tried to lower he that He was an man. old man named John Smith. He sold papers back in Hartford. Old John Smith. Lorraine, I think I, I better... you met him one day when you were a little girl. You helped him sell his papers one afternoon. It meant a lot in his life, an awful lot. Do you remember him? No. You were 11 years old. You lived on Cushing Street. Yes. I, I went downtown after school one day to look in the windows. I had a nickel and I bought a paper from that old man. He had tobacco juice on his lips. I talked to him. He told me all about selling papers. He said I was a very nice little girl. He asked me my name and where I lived. He talked about school and about growing up. He told me I'd grow up someday and be a lovely woman. He said, lovely woman. He was very nice. He was the nicest man I ever knew. And I only knew him that one afternoon. 
Where is he? He's dead, Lorraine. Dead? He left you all his money. Insurance money. It comes to $1,500. You're lying. No, Lorraine. He wanted you to have it. He worked very hard and sacrificed a great deal to make sure you'd have it. You're making all this up. It's all a lie. Only that afternoon. It was an important afternoon. Here, look. What? Don't come closer. These prove I'm from the insurance company. Here, here's the check. Throw them over. All right. Go ahead. Pick them up. I won't make a move. What do you think now? That old man. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Expense account item 17, 550, martinis. I needed them. It was my first and I hope my last half hour with an intended suicide. Attach find insurance check payable to Lorraine Broderick for $1,500. The psychiatrist who examined her believed that she will make a complete recovery in time. Until such time, she's not classified as a responsible person. I notified two parties of the events at the Wentmore Hotel. One, Mr. William Dameron in New York City, who arrived in Los Angeles yesterday morning. Two, Joseph Tappan, who has already secured legal counsel for Lorraine Broderick when she answers the bad check charges against her. As you know, in matters like this... Restitution is usually preferred to prosecution. Expense account item 18, $185. Transportation back to Hartford. Total, $1,132.14. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, please, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, the Cronin matter. A matter of keeping a sweet old lady from carefully and deliberately losing her life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Eleanor Audley, Barbara Eiler, Virginia Gregg, Carlton Young, Harry Bartell, Herbert Ellis, John Daner, Marvin Miller, Tony Barrett, Frank Gerstel, Chester Stratton, and Lawrence Dobkin. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs>